Rider Japan, right, I need to balance the carbs on my FJ. Um, never done it before, did a little bit of research. Everyone seems to think this is the best tool for the job. It's Carb Tune Pro and uh, cost like 90, 100 quid. The prices vary quite a lot. I actually bought this in Japan. It worked out a little bit cheaper than getting it in England. But anyway, they all seem similar prices. So that's on that. Comes in a zip out, zip up pack. And uh, yeah, you got the instructions. You get a clear bit of tube and some brass thingies and lengths of rubber hose. Oh yeah, and this releasable zip tie thing. I've never seen this before, it's quite good, look. Anyway, that's just for hanging it off the bike. So I don't want to balls it up, so I'm reading the instructions. Carbtune Pro is a mechanical manometer. Uh, stuff about the damping, you need to, this bit of, what it's saying to do is this bit of clear tube is a, a restrictor. Uh, it's got a really tiny hole through the middle of that. So you've got to cut off, cut this into four sections and then stick it in there and then that reduces the pressure inside, doing something scientific. I'm not going to bother trying to understand, um, but that helps, helps the, uh, the gauges not go too wild apparently. So it sort of restricts restricts the pressure doing what it's doing and damp dampens it so you get a nice readable average reading anyway so let's go ahead and do that so it says cut this into four equal lengths so we got eight centimeters I mean you can just guess it I guess just under eight just under four there you go halfway it says use a craft knife so I'm taking that as it means you need to have a nice straight cut. Tell you what, craft knife ain't really strong enough. I literally can't push through it with that craft knife. So this is I've got a really thin blade pen knife here. Let's just divide this into four. Okay, next it says cut 10 centimeters off the rubber hose. You've got f these rubber hoses here, there's four of them. So each one, I'm gonna take 10 centimeters off. It says about, so maybe it hasn't got to be that accurate, but it's nice to know they're all kind of the same. And then we gotta push these in. And then that goes back on there. And then this side, that short bit, that short bit that goes to the engine. So this is the, the restrictor side will connect to the carbs. So that's all four of those ready to go. Uh, just reading about putting these on the bike. It does say when you're using these, just one little thing I wanna mention, um, they hang vertically off your bike, but it says if you move the gauges slightly off vertical, it might add some extra friction and damping uh, that might help the the rods not pulsate so much. That might help you out a little bit if you're having trouble getting a sort of a satisfactory reading off them. Um, you can slow them down a bit being so jumpy just by having that a bit of an angle. Anyway, let's see what happens on my bike. All right, so tank is off, taking the plugs off the Inlet things. Get ready to set this up. So, obviously, one tube there, cylinder one, two, three, four. And then, obviously, you get that correct on your bike. Remember, the damper side goes to the engine. For these are in a right old state. I'm gonna get some new ones. Basically, I'm modifying and restoring this bike. So every time I do a job and I find some worn out bits, I replace them with new. And then condition of it slowly improves. So yeah, basically you want to be doing this last. So I've done the valve clearances service, uh, new air filter, new oil, oil filter, carbs are all cleaned out. Um, 
exhaust system's fresh on it even as well. So basically everything's everything else is done. No air leaks. All checked and double checked, everything's working fine. Uh, the engine's a little bit warm, like I can still touch it obviously. I just idled it for a few minutes. Basically it, it idles nicely uh, without any choke, so that's just what I've done. Okay, so cylinder one, cylinder one, cylinder two, cylinder two. I've never done this before. Hopefully I'm not doing anything wrong, but there might be better ways to do it that I'm doing it. So do your own research, watch all the videos using these things. There are loads of them on YouTube, people are getting these. Most people say this is the best one because there's different versions of uh, equipment to do this job. But everybody says this is the best, so that's why I bought it. And I've got R1 on my left here. So it just runs so well. I sort of feel reluctant to do any maintenance, but I've been riding it with no sort of real maintenance for three years now. So as I spent money on this, I'm going to freshen up everything I can on the R1 and then do this as well on that on that bike. So yeah, it comes with this little zip tie thing. You just hang that off your handlebars. So I think we're ready to go now. So on top of the carbs, I've got three screws you're aiming for. One, two, three. Uh, this one does those two. That side does those two, and the middle one does all four together. So that's where we're doing the adjustments from. Okay, so I thought I'd uh, just do a voiceover this bit of the video rather than shouting over the noise of the engine. So yeah, I just started up, look, I just sort of gently revved it a little bit just so the engine's like idling like normal. Um, but it's not too bad, look, right off the go. So experimenting, first of all, like I said before, haven't done this job before, so just making a minute adjustment and I learn immediately there's quite a big reaction from the carbs on that manometer, just a minute adjustment of the screw. When I say minute, I mean like if someone was watching you do it, they would likely not be able to see you move it. There's very minute adjustments, so you do it very carefully if you're doing this. And obviously make sure you're looking at the correct one to the screw to the cylinders you're adjusting. Yeah, I mean, you adjust it, it goes a bit worse, and then you turn it back, it gets a bit better look. There's like just happened there. I mean, that, seeing it at that moment, that's about as good as I could get it. Yeah, like here. But you want to keep trying to see if you can improve it. Just try to bring this side down a little bit, that side up a little bit, you try and balance it out. But after this, I thought I'd get all four the same. Uh, I couldn't do that. And when I came back inside, I looked on YouTube videos to see what other people were saying about it. And uh, yeah, most people said it's kind of an average. It's sort of best, best pass, really. Like one guy said, you can spend all day doing this, you'll never get perfect. Here, I realized, why am I trying to tune it like perfectly at idle? Like I want to be, I want it to run perfectly while the revs are up a little bit. And the bike was performing a bit better. They were more straight to each other as, a, as the revs rose. after this but that's about as good as I got it. I improved it a little bit from the, how it already was but um, I was quite happy with it. And then blipping the throttle here, it did seem a bit more responsive to what I had than what it was before I started mucking about with it so I do feel like I improved it. Look I got three pretty good just uh, carp number three was down a bit. Okay all put back together nothing left to do but go for a ride and I'm out for a couple of extra reasons today. These are Japanese carpenters boots. I had them, I had a cobbler modify the tongue and stuff, so they're a bit more comfortable and they're just super grippy. So these are my new motorbike biking boots. So testing these out. Also, I've got a antique ashtray I'm delivering to like an outdoor smoking area near a shrine because I couldn't sell it online. So it's a nice windy road up there. Show you a bit of Japan and then test out the bike, my boots, <laughs> do a delivery, like a multi purpose video. Okay, so I can't go fast because this camera, the GoPro, will not securely hold to the petrol tank or the headlight, and so yeah, my only options are where to put it. Anyway, so let's go for a cruise. 
<laughs> okay, so balance the carbs. What I was hoping, I was hoping there's like a sort of a, a gruffly sort of fluffy patch in the rev range. Like I'm guessing, I've got rev gauge, so I'm guessing about between two and a half, three and a half thousand RPM. And then it was sort of it was tight before that and then tight after that. So I was hoping balancing them might be solved that without really understanding what was causing it. Man down, man down. Oh. <laughs> Seen better days, eh, GoPro? <laughs> can't, can't securely attach it to the bike. This little roof, roofed section over here. It's the drop off point. Check this out, yeah. You know, uh, smokers are very much second class citizens in other countries. In Japan, you get all this built for you nice view, shelter, clocks on the wall, plenty of benches, plenty of space, pull up bar <laughs> for exercise after your cigarette. But yeah, they got these crappy old ashtrays on the floor, and then I had this nice old antique ashtray. I tried to sell it online, no one wanted it, so I was going to give it away or leave it here. Okay, success. Boots are good, tyres are good, engine's good, did the delivery. That's it, thanks for watching. <laughs>